the biopsychosocial model. Let's begin with an example. Imagine you're a judge in court. Standing before you is a young man convicted of a robbery. While his guilt isn't in doubt, a decision still needs to be made about his sentence. How long will he spend in jail? The criminal's lawyer has presented the details of his client's personal circumstances, which should all be taken into consideration. The money was stolen due to a gambling addiction. The criminal was 19 years old at the time of the crime. He has a close relationship with both of his parents and he was well provided for as a child. However, he suffers from low self-esteem. He struggled academically at school. After leaving school, he became addicted to both drugs and alcohol. And he suffers from mental health problems, including OCD. So what sentence would you impose? Does the criminal deserve some leniency due to the difficulties of his youth? These are the details of a real court case heard in the Adelaide Federal Magistrates Court in November 2021. The criminal was sentenced to two years and five months imprisonment. Whenever a case is heard in an Australian court, the personal circumstances of the criminal are considered as an important part of understanding their behaviour and motivation in committing a crime. This allows the criminal's behaviour to be analysed holistically, as there are commonly a wide range of influences on their behaviour. It also allows a judge to understand the level of culpability, the risk of reoffending, and the prospects of rehabilitation. In psychology, we study and apply scientific theories in an attempt to understand human thoughts, feelings, and behaviours. In doing so, we must consider the range of influences on the human condition rather than focusing only on a single factor and viewing behaviour only through that lens. The biopsychosocial model represents how biological, psychological and social factors should be considered simultaneously to allow for a comprehensive understanding of someone's thoughts, feelings and behaviours. So let's have a look at each component. The biological aspect refers to factors affecting the body and brain. Examples include genetics, use of drugs or alcohol, physical health issues, sleep, brain trauma, experiences of stress, gender and age. The psychological aspect refers to individual differences and personal experiences. It covers factors such as personality traits, mental health issues, personal beliefs and attributes, learning, memory, emotions, attitudes, coping skills, and past experiences. The social aspect refers to the influence of individuals, groups of people, and society as a whole. Examples include education, family dynamics, friendships and other relationships, level of social support, socioeconomic factors such as poverty, access to support services, prejudice or racism, working environment, and religion. As you can see in the diagram, there is overlap between each component. For example, the effect of drugs is biological due to its impact on the body and brain. However, drug use is also commonly linked to peer pressure or the social norms of an individual's friendship group. Family relationships influence people both socially and psychologically. Our level of intelligence is both biological and psychological. So let's revisit our criminal and his personal circumstances. He had a gambling addiction, biological, psychological or social. This could be attributed to either the biological or psychological aspect of the biopsychosocial model. A predisposition for addiction has been found to be genetic in some people, but it is also an aspect of mental health, a learned behaviour and a maladaptive coping strategy. Let's see if you can classify the others. You may wish to pause the video. How did you go? The key idea here 
is that when attempting to comprehend an individual's behaviours, motivations and attitudes, a thorough understanding will only occur if all components of the biopsychosocial model are considered simultaneously.